This is December 21st, 1987. My name is Joe Todd. This is an interview with Forrest W. Jones in Midwest City, Oklahoma. Mr. Jones, where were you born? Born in Bennington County, Vermont, March 6, 1922. 22. Who is your father? William Jones. And your mother? Ella Bickford Jones. Ella Bickford. B I C K F O R D. Right. Okay. What kind of work your father did? Uh, I was a handyman, farming. He worked in uh, worked in a uh, line quarry, and he, uh, his last job was uh, as a storekeeper. At a country store. And you, did you go through school in Vermont? No, no. I moved to uh, New York State when I was uh, about uh, one year old. Mm -hmm. To uh, where in New York? In a uh, town in North Petersburg. North Petersburg. I went to, uh, I went to uh, grade school there. I went to high school in Hoosick Falls, New York. What's the name of the town? Hoosick Falls. H O O S I C K F A L L S. Okay. And what year did you graduate from high school? 1939. 1939. After high school, what did you do? I uh, worked on a farm until I, until I went to the army. In New York? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Was this your father's farm? No, this was, uh, this was a neighbor's farm. Mm -hmm. And you joined the army? January 9th, 1941. And where do you take your basic train? Just go through Barracks. So you were sent straight to Hawaii? Sent straight over there, went, uh, went uh, down through the Panama Canal and uh, over to Pearl Harbor, arrived there February 28th, 41. Cut off the ship the following morning, March 1st. Tell me about the trip to Hawaii on the ship. What, what boat did you go over? Well, the USAT Republic. It was an army transport. Is that an LST? Uh, it was a United States Army transport. I don't know. That's what it was called. Okay. It's just a troop transport. Yeah. Okay. Anything happen the trip over? We had a storm off Cape Hatteras, uh, two days, and uh, everybody on the ship got sick, and uh, we all got dysentery, and we were quarantined and uh, off from uh, Pearl for about two weeks before we could be uh, assigned to our unit to, to take basic training. Um, how many men were on the Republic? Oh, Lord. I don't know, about, you know less than a thousand. Mm -hmm. And how about the Panama Canal? What do you think of the canal? No. Oh, it was awful hot. I know I got sunburned uh, going through there, but the, it was quite an achievement. I mean, to see those big ships going through the canal like that. Uh, How long did it take to go through? Oh, less than a day. And how many locks? How high up or down do you go on the canal? Those locks? Been so long ago. Huh? <laughs> uh, I don't know, 10, 20 feet. It, it seemed like. I don't think it was much more than that. Oh, oh it might have been, yeah. Yeah, it was more than that, I think. So you landed 1st of March of 41? Yeah, well, well, we got there February 28th, but they didn't let us off the ship till the following okay. morning. And where did you land? Down right there at Pearl. Pearl Harbor. Yeah. And did you get to spend much time in Honolulu? Just ship you straight out to Schofield Barracks. No, oh, we went straight from that quarantine camp to uh, to uh, Schofield. Okay, now the quarantine camp was. It was a tent city. I, I mean, just be they want to make sure they got that got the dysentery yeah. bug out of us, you know, before we went out. There. Now, was that there? Was that near Hall River? The yeah, dysentery. Yes, yeah, I don't know exactly where. Okay, and you were there for how many weeks? About well, two, three weeks. Two, three weeks. Yeah. What did you do in the camp? Well, we just. Didn't do much of anything except uh, we marched around, did, you know, did a few drills and stuff like that. But 
the main thing was to, to get a system cleared out. Okay. And uh, how you travel from there to the Schofield Barracks? I don't remember, but it must have been by truck. I'm pretty sure. How far is that? Oh, I think it's about 15, 16 miles, something like that. And tell me about basic Schofield, the training you went through. Well, it, it was kind of rough. Uh, just ordinary basic, regular, regular basic, you know, close order drill, and then they had uh, a gun drill and all that kind of stuff. Uh, what weapons did you train with in basic? We trained with a 75 millimeter field gun. See, we took artillery basic, you know. And of course, we we uh, we trained with a 45, and a Springfield artillery. And you know, that's about the only weapons we did. And you had the French 75? Yeah, yeah. Was that still a horse drawn at that time? No, no. You hook that up. You hook it up to trucks. Okay, trucks. Uh, when did the army dismount? You know, go from horseback to trucks. Gee, I don't know. I have no idea. Okay. It, it was uh, before I got into it. And how long did basic last? Uh, I think it was four weeks, and then it was assigned to our to our outfit, and got additional training actually there. Too. And which outfit were you? I was assigned to uh, Battery D, 8th Field Artillery. Were you assigned to a division or was this a... That was part of the Hawaiian Department at that time. And, and, and October the 1st they reorganized over there and uh, they, they activated the 24th Division and 25th Division. And our outfit uh, became Battery A, 64th Field Artillery of the 25th Infantry Division. <laughs> How big is Schofield Barracks? How big? You know, in, uh, yeah, in area. In area? Well, the, the main place where the buildings are is uh, probably about three, four square miles, I guess. But of course, there's a lot of lot of area around yeah. it. He was Schofield. What? He was Schofield. Was it named after a man? Oh, Schofield. I think it was, yeah, but I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I have no idea. So, after basic, what'd you do? Well, we had our regular, regular drills just about every day, and uh, but you, but you usually would last about a half a day, I guess. We used to get every Wednesday afternoon off, I remember that, and uh, usually have inspections on Saturday and get some Saturday afternoon and Sunday off. What did you do for recreation in your off-duty time? Oh, uh, we had, well, had a lot of sports over there, but I didn't, I didn't get into that very much. Uh, sometimes we went swimming to, uh, out at uh, Soldier's Beach. We, we go out there, going out there several times. Where is Soldier's? I don't know exactly where it is on the island. I think it's on the north side of the island. It was called Soldier's Beach, but I, uh, I think it probably had another name. Mm -hmm. What was the attitude of the Hawaiians to the mainlanders at that time? They were, they were kind of distant, you know, to mm -hmm. us, you know. Do you have much connection, contact with the Hawaiians at all? No, I didn't, no. How many, how often did you go to Honolulu? I got to Honolulu three times is all, all the time I was there. And have you been back there since? I've been through there. I've just flown in there to Hickam Field and flown out twice. Okay, did, did you have any idea that we'd go to war? At that time when yeah. I was over there, I had no idea about it. What was Remember? your opinion of the war in Europe, or Germany? And I was pretty young, and I, I I didn't think too much about that, you know. But I knew that the, 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 uh, that there was trouble in the world, and one of these days we we're going to get into it. But I didn't expect to get into it, you know, like this. You know, it was a shock. Uh, was there any idea at all that the boy would be attacked by the Japanese? No. no. But we, our guns were packed in, packed in grease, you know, and calculated and stuff. <laughs> the next day, we were trying to get that stuff off, you know. I understand. Uh, Mr. Harding told me that they had an, an alert. 
it all alert for one or two weeks and then it was called off. That, that may have just been a wheeler though, instead of Schofield. Yeah, Park. that was probably that was that was probably the Air Force. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. the Army Air Corps. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah Army Air Corps. Didn't have a didn't have an Air right. Force. <laughs> so, what were you doing December sixth? December sixth? Saturday. Saturday? I can't remember, just laying around the barracks, I guess, because I didn't go anywhere, I don't think. Because I remember what I was doing that morning of December the, the uh, 7th. Okay. So, what time do you get up on December 7th? Uh, it must have been probably about, about 7 o'clock. See, on, on, on Sunday, you, uh, we didn't have any, didn't have any formations or anything. What time is Reveille normally? Uh, six o'clock. Six o'clock. Yeah. And you slept in on Sunday. Yeah. So you got up, and what'd you do? Tell me exactly oh, what just, happened. Yeah, you I know, showered and shaved. Well, I was halfway through shaving, is what happened. Halfway through shaving when I, when I heard the explosions first. And then then we heard, we heard some gunfire. So, you know, everybody went outside. And we saw these these planes coming over with, with that rising sun on it, you know. And then it didn't know who it was, you know. But but when the dirt started flying up in your face, well, you, you know, and the guy in front of me goes down, right? Well, we knew what was going on. We, we knew we were at war, but uh, you know, we soon found out it was the Japanese that, that we were at war with. You know? What was your thoughts when you first heard the explosions? What was going through your mind? Well, I thought they was having a mock a, a mock battle or something, you know, some kind of training. I thought the the Air Force was having a training, you know, and dropping bombs out in the field someplace or something. But uh, when, the, when we found out there were real bullets, well, you know, we knew something bad was going on. So you're halfway through shaving, and then what to do? You found out it was Japanese. Yeah, we went outside, and then, then when we helped carry this, this, you know, one guy inside the mess hall there so we could, you know, get him out, get him under cover. Yeah, he had three bullets went right through the ground. I don't know if he lived or not. Which direction did the Japanese come from, do you know? Well, they, they came from the north, I understand, in Pearl, but uh, I think they come from, come over uh, Koli Koli Pass on us, which would be, be from the west. Can you show me out here? Because here's Schofield Barracks. Here's Schofield. Here's why. Right? When Coley Coley Pass has got to be right up in here someplace. Okay, let me turn it around this way. Here. Can you show me exactly what's here, Schofield? Here's Schofield, and why now is just went straight over the pass in the line now. So if they had to come this way, which would I guess it'd be from the southwest. But of course, it's, uh, the, the, our pearls over here, so I imagine that's what they did, you know, just circled around. Well, they might have come this way, I'm not sure, but the ones I saw were coming at us from the side where Cody Cody Pass was. I'll I tell you, Barrett, you can see the pass. Yeah. And, and they were coming right straight at us from that direction. So, after you, after you got the guy in undercover, then what did you do? Well, we, uh, I don't know, we, we, we tried to get organized there, the officers, you know, they seemed to say, I was pretty young in there, I, I, was, I was just a PFC, you know, and I didn't do much except what I was told, but uh, we, we got our weapons out, you know, what we had there, and ammunition, and uh, of course, we were getting the, our field artillery pieces ready to go to the field, you know, because our, our, our our ammunition and uh, our guns were no good against these airplanes. You know. Our place was out, out in the field in case they, they, that they invaded. So that's what we were trying to do, you know, get ready to, to go to the field. And that's what we did, you know, later on. So during the attack, you know, what did you do to get your weapons out, ammunition? Did you know, what uh, fuel that there were in the arms room but there wasn't very many there. Where, where was the, where was most of the ammunition kept? Well, the ammunition was, wasn't kept there. It was kept over uh, over on the other side of Cody Cody Pass, and that's a big ammunition dump there. Did the Japanese attack that? 
I, I don't I don't think they hit it. No. So, were you all successful in shooting any Japanese planes down there at Schofield Barracks? Our outfit, no. Yeah. No. What was it? They Japanese? shot at planes, but I mean, I, I don't, you know, you know, just, just with handguns and stuff. Hey, what What was that Schofield Barracks? What was that school for? Yeah, that? what was stationed there? What well, the infantry, well, we had the 24th Infantry Division, the 25th Infantry Division, about uh, 15,000 men each, I think, if they were at full speed. And then they, then they had a bunch of engineers, you know, and, uh, and medics, naturally. And, uh, what was the main target that the Japanese were hitting at school field barracks? They, they weren't, I don't think they were hitting any target there. I think they were just strafing, is all. Did they bomb? No, I, I don't think there's any bombs dropped in Schofield, as far as I know. And of course, you know Wheeler Field right up right on the edge of it. So uh, I mean, they strafed that, and I think they, I think they dropped a few small bombs in there. Mm -hmm. Most of the big bombs, you know, that, that Pearl and, and the Hickam Field. So were you trying to shoot at the Japanese? To I didn't find a place I, to hide, or what? I didn't have a gun myself. So what you did? I don't remember doing much anything, just standing around, walking around, and talking, everybody talking, you know, and uh, just trying to figure out what's going on, and until our officers and NCOs got the things organized and we started packing up, you know. How many men were killed at Schofield? I don't remember. I, I got the figures on that, if you want. How much damage was done? Well, it's just knocked a bunch of windows out, and, uh, and you know, that's about it. Mm -hmm. And how long did the attack last? Uh, they come in there twice, as far as I know, and uh, it wasn't long. It maybe 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes at the most each time. Mm -hmm. but, but there were some... Uh, you could hear some, you know, dog fights up in the air, you know, and, and there very few of our planes up there, but once in a while, it, you know, you'd hear them, you know, up there. Were you the one telling me about the big black limousine, the black car? Mm -hmm. Someone told me they saw a big a black car a couple days before the attack. I thought his antenna sticking out. Maybe it's true. No, I don't know anything about that. That's all new to me. So, what did you do after the attack? What did I do after the attack? We were just packing up and getting organized and getting, getting our guns ready to go to the, to the field. And they went to the field that afternoon. Did you think the Japanese would have made? Yeah. We expected that they would. And, and we got out in the field and we dug just about all night to rock and everything else, you know, trying, trying to get our guns in, in a gun emplacement so we, so we could fall. And where did you go? What part of the island? I don't know what part it was. I have no idea. Mm -hmm. No, no. And how long were you out there? Ooh. I wasn't out in the field all the time. They sent me back in after about a month. Sent me back in to Schofield. And it's where the administrative headquarters was. And, uh, it made me a company clerk, a battery clerk. So I, I stayed there until we shipped out. No, I didn't stay there either. I, I got transferred to uh, division headquarters because I needed somebody down there that could take shorthand. And you took shorthand. Yeah. And division headquarters at Schofield? Yeah. Um, were there any civilians working on Schofield Barracks? Any civilians? I think so. Pretty yeah. sure. Oh yeah, there must have been in the, in the, in the laundries, the PXs, and uh, stuff like that. You know. What was the attitude toward the the Japanese on the island? The ones that lived in what after the attack? The attitude. Uh, our attitude. Yeah. We didn't trust them. We didn't trust them. <laughs> One inch. <laughs> Well, and how long were you at school for the barracks then, after the attack? We left uh, in October sometime. October 42? October 42. We left on the SS Norden. 
submarine or something that was surfaced uh, because uh, all hell broke, broke loose upon deck and uh, we were packed five, five high in this thing, in the bunks, you know, five high, and just like sandwiched in. You know. And everybody was trying to get up on deck and uh, it was crazy, you know, because we had all our gun, we had a gun, ammunition, and, and a pack and everything in that bunk. <laughs> It was just impossible to get up on deck. And this lasted about an hour, I guess, this fight, whatever it was. And I never did find out what it was because everything was so secret then, you know. We didn't even know where we were going or anything until the morning we got off that ship. We didn't know we was going to go out the night. Let me, uh, let me back up and ask that December <coughs> 7th and the next few days, were people triggered happy? Yeah. Yeah, and I she, understand that we shot she, our own planes down there. Of it, yeah. We were shooting cows and mongoose. And so, December 17th, 1942, was that the big invasion of Guadalcanal? No, no, August. August. Uh, so, Guadalcanal had been taken by that time? Not, no, not entirely. It wasn't entirely taken until February of 1943. So, what did you do on Guadalcanal? Well, uh, we established, established our, our bivouac in, in between the airfields there. <coughs> but but uh, most of our infantry outfits w went right into the battle. But, but I was assigned to, to, to division headquarters then, so uh, the only thing I got was air raids. What kind of uh, uh, command post did you have there in Guadalcanal, or your living Oh, tent. It's a, we, have, we have tents. And our offices were tents. And who was division commander? There was uh, J. Lawton Collins. Oh, J. Lawton Collins. Mm -hmm. He was later shipped over to New York. Yeah. Yeah. What kind of man was he? As far as I know, he was a good man. He didn't. Did you know him? No, no, I didn't really know him. I, I know him by sight. Was all. And how far were you from the front lines at Guadalcanal, the division CP? Oh, maybe five miles, six miles. And how long were you there? Well, we, we traveled around uh, some of those other islands, uh, some, but uh, we left in, the, in November. For 43 and went to New Zealand. So we were there quite a while. And why were you sent to New Zealand? We went down there for a rest. And what was the attitude of the New, New Zealanders toward the Americans? Oh, they were wonderful. Yeah, we didn't have any trouble there at all. I mean, they couldn't do enough for them. And I guess after Coral Sea, they were. I was in Australia doing the anniversary of Coral Sea Week. Mm -hmm. And any American treated like a king down there. Oh, yeah. And Coral Sea Week. Oh, yeah. And so, how long were you there in New Zealand? Zero. After Christmas and New Year's, sometime in January, we went to uh, New Caledonia for more, more extensive training. What type of training? Uh, just just physical training, most mostly. Go on a lot of hikes and climbing and uh, and uh, all, all kind of jungle training and stuff. Uh, because I, I guess they figured they were going to. Uh, we figured we was going to go to Borneo is where we figured that we was going. But we 
went to Luzon instead. Were you there for the invasion of Luzon? They come in there two days later. The invasion was the 7th, and the game was off, and we got there the 9th of uh, January, 45. Was the Battle of Manila still going on? I think that was mostly taken. It, it may have been going on, I don't know. And where was the Division CP set up? Well, we, we kept moving just about every day, you know, we, we, uh, until uh, until about the, the time that I left there. It was got kind of stabilized there. We was at an agricultural school up in the North Central Park. What we, were your duties with the division? I, I was uh, the, uh, the, uh, the court reporter and, uh, and clerk for the, uh, for the judge advocate section. Did you handle cases or what? Well, yeah, yeah, all, all, all the army cases, you know, anybody tried by uh, by, by general court martial. All the general cases that you handled, general. Is that oh. a fair question? <laughs> well, we uh, in New Zealand, we had a couple of rape cases, statutory rape cases, and uh, we had some robbery, a couple of robberies. We had some murder cases, and we had some cases of a few of, uh, of, of, of men deserving the front line, but not very many. What's it been with the desertion? Death. Did In wartime. Did it ever carry it out? Not to my knowledge. It's automatically appealed anyway, so yeah. I would never know. Anymore. So after Mizan, Where'd you go? Went home. You came home. And what was the date? April 1945. I don't know. I was sent back to the States on a 45 day temporary duty deal. Then I was supposed to go back to my outfit, you know, wherever it was. While I was home, the uh, war over Europe ended. So I got a cablegram from my outfit in the Philippines. They wanted to know if I wanted to come back or stay in the States. All right, give me an answer real quick. What'd you do in PE Day? Was there a celebration? Yes. I was in Camp Joseph T. Robinson, Arkansas. And we, we just <laughs> tore the place up. <laughs> What'd you do? Got drunk, I guess. <laughs> Almost, anyway. And then where were you in PJ Day? PJ Day. See, PE Day was in May and PJ Day was in Oh, May. and no, I got it wrong. V, VJ Day is when, when it tore the place up when I was down at Cap Robinson. I was, I was home on VE Day. Well, I don't know if I did anything, really, because I was, I was unfurled then, you know, more or less. And, uh, so how long did that celebration last at Camp Robinson? All night, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> I think that things quieted down next day. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then uh, were you discharged then, or did you stay? Well, there? I had to wait. To wait. Uh, you know, you, uh, you had so many points to get discharged with, and uh, and uh, I, the job I had, uh, I was a warrant officer there in the in the judge advocate section there. And I, I had to have a replacement before I could go, so I had to wait till I got a replacement who, who had lesser points than I did. So, yeah. so I was there until uh, until November. Uh, 45? Yeah. Then you were discharged? Mm -hmm. so I, I was put on an inactive status. I wasn't actually discharged. What was your rank at that time? Uh, I was a warrant officer during the grade. And did you return to New York? Yeah. And what did you do after the war? I worked in a country store there, the same country store that my father worked at. What was the name of it? It was Brennan's Tool Store, D.W. Brennan's Tool Country Store, you know, general store. And uh, that was that North Petersburg? Mm -hmm. When did you meet your wife? Well, I'm the second wife. She's my second wife. I met my uh, first wife uh, in uh, New York City. I was assigned to New York uh, Military District in uh, uh, 
1953, I think I, I met her. We got married in 1954. And my wife died in, uh, in January, January 16th, 1978. What was her name? It was Ann McMahon. And then, when did you all meet? We met in 79. Out here in Oklahoma. April, 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 April 79. And you met in Oklahoma? Right. What were you doing here in Oklahoma? After my wife died, I moved out here because three of my brothers live here. And uh, I wanted to be near some of my relatives. And when did you all get married? We got married in June 1980. And are you retired now? I retired from the Army uh, May 1st of 1964. So you went back in the Army then? Yes, I went back in. I stayed out stayed out three years on an inactive status. And then, I, and then I enlisted as an enlisted man and went back in as a staff sergeant. Did you work for you? Yes, yeah, so I was in Tokyo when it happened and they sent me right over there. What did you do in Korea? What was I, was, I was with an intelligence outfit and uh, we was in charge of, uh, of getting our, 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 our agents out to the front lines and getting them back. Now you say your agents, your MI, your intelligence? Well, well we used the Koreans, you know. We was, trying to, we was getting positive intelligence. We were sending them through the lines, and then uh, they would work their way back, and usually we'd have to pick them up in the POW cage on the, on the way back. And then we'd, and then we'd uh, you know, interview them and interrogate them and uh, get whatever information we could. And that was sent back to General MacArthur's headquarters in Tokyo. How did, how did you send them through the lines? How did you get them? I, had, I or one of, one of our outfit had to go to the front line with the agent and talk to whoever was in charge there. And, and so they let them through the lines. And sometimes you had to go right up on the line to make sure they got through. And then how they get to the Korean lines, North Korean lines? Uh, that, that, that was the hard part. Well, they were Koreans anyway, see. Yeah. So, so we had uh, kids, women, uh, old men, you know, all types of people. It was, uh, was there a definite front in Korea like there was in uh, that, No, that front, that front would move every hour. They generally could just infiltrate through. And no, no. Some, sometimes I get I get behind the lines, and uh, I, got, I got my own men shooting at me, <laughs> you know, trying to get back. Yeah. Or, or you be doing out the lines there. Well, the whole outfit see would move while you while you was out there out there traveling, you know, watching to make sure your agent could get out there and everything, you know. And, and they don't they don't care about you. You're only one man, you know. So, so, so they get some action, they just take off, you know. And you left stranded there by yourself. How close did the North Koreans come to you? Well, I don't know. Really. <laughs> now, how did you pick up the agents when they came back? You said a POW status? Well, they would try to get captured coming back, see. And then uh, every morning we'd, we'd go check a people, check where they, where they put these POWs, see. We call it POW case. And see if any of our agents ever, because they didn't carry any identification at all. So, so, so we had to identify them, and then they, they and then they go let them out. So. And what kind of information were they bringing back? Oh, the, the number of troops, and the, you know what kind of arm they had, and all that kind of stuff. And were they wearing uniforms, or just the big clothes? Oh, they, they just had ordinary clothes on. Were you there when the Chinese came down? Yes. Where were you? I was in the North Korean capital in Pyongyang, and we started back and all the way back to Busan. How'd you travel? <laughs> two and a half ton truck. I was driving it. Was that a retreat or was that a panic? It, it was, well, I don't think it was, well, it was a panic. I mean, we, we, we didn't just run. We, we just, you know, made our way backwards all the time. I talked to some guys in the first cab, and of course they were hit hard there. Yeah, they yeah. said it was just, mm -hmm. they just dropped the rain. Mm -hmm. Well, 
Well, I guess some outfits had two pilots. Of course, the, yeah. the first calf took the front of the Chinese attack there, yeah. and they were really getting over there. Yeah. So you came from, and you came to Pusan. How far is that? How far did you go? Well, you know, the whole length of the, <laughs> the country, you know, just about. With your agents, did you have any idea the Chinese were coming down? Yes, yes. We, we, we told them they were coming, and they didn't believe us. That's right. Who'd you tell? We sent our reports back to MacArthur's headquarters. And, and they, as far as I know, they didn't take any action on it. Either. Because we never got word officially that, that they were in the country, you know. And uh, our agents, well, knew that they were Chinese, you know. That, they were in North Korean uniform. They said they were Chinese, you know. And certainly that, that's exactly what it was. And how long did, it, did that retreat take from John to Pusan? I don't remember. It seemed like it was. Anyway, it must have taken over a week. What was the weather like at that time? I don't, I don't remember what, what time of the year it was, was even. Because I heard the winters got pretty bad in Korea. Oh yeah, yeah, the first winter I was over there. I got over, over there September the 1st of 1950. The first winter, I mean, it froze to death. What kind of winter, winter froze did? Well, I didn't have the, the proper boots to, uh, you know, one thing. And, uh, I guess it, I just didn't have the proper clothes. I didn't have the, I didn't have the, you know, the warm underwear and stuff. But uh, it was better, you know, it got better. We got some better clothing, better equipment as time went by. And how long you went to Korea? Was there 14 months. Were you there when the armistice was declared? Oh no, no, I, I got out of there in the, in the uh, November of uh, 52. 52? Yeah. And where'd you go? Well, I was evacuated out. I got uh, hepatitis and yellow jaundice and uh, I was evacuated to Tokyo and then Yokohama and then back to the States. And then what'd you do in the Army from then until you retired? Hmm. I was assigned to military district in, in New York and uh, part-time and part-time in New Jersey, sub-area headquarters until I was uh, shipped to Germany. I went to uh, Bamberg, Germany for three years. Was that still the Army of Occupation? Or no, no, it wasn't. It? Well, uh, I don't think it's called it. No, it wasn't that time, no. Let me back up before we get into Germany. What was the attitude of the South Korean people to the Americans? It was very good, I thought. Yeah. It took a good, very good, you know. We didn't have any fights before that. Why was Korea divided? Why was it divided? Uh, when was it divided in North and South Korea? Uh, after uh, after World War World War Two. Why was it? Why the division? Well, I don't know. The, the, because of the uh, I think it was the Russians had the north part and the, occupied the north part, and the, the Americans occupied the south part. You know, like the deal they had over in, in Germany. You know, it right? was occupied by. The, but, but uh, several different countries, four different countries, I think. What was the attitude of the German people for the Americans when you were there? It was cordial, but uh, there, there was some friction, I think, a little friction. And why did you retire to Oklahoma? Why did you retire to Oklahoma? Well, I, <laughs> I came out here. You know when I come out here. Yeah, right? You retired in New York. Uh, oh. I retired in New York. I was in Fort Wadsworth and uh, on Staten Island, New York, when I when I retired from there in 1964. And you moved back to Oklahoma. And no, I, I lived in New Jersey then. That's where my first wife was from, and I lived there until she died. 
fact, I lived there. I was still in the army when I lived there. You know, I lived there for several years. You know, before I retired, even though. That's right. And then you moved over. Yeah, I even yeah. rented my house out okay. while I was over in Germany. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what have you done since retirement? <laughs> Travel. Travel a lot uh, if I can. Uh, mm -hmm. Got to the point where uh, it's kind of hard to get around sometimes. But, uh, I've had uh, a couple heart attacks, and, uh, you know, and, uh, and uh, very, very poor, uh, very poor circulation. We all had bypass surgery. And I guess I just had a light stroke. You know, so. Anything else about uh, December seventh? Talk about you your phone. Any specific incidents? Uh, I just remember that man getting hit right in front of me, you know. And I remember seeing those planes. I remember hearing, hearing those bombs going off. I hear those bombs in Pearl Harbor. And that's a long ways away. But uh, so it, took, it took a hell of a blast, you know. And, uh, that's about it. Well, I think we have a good interview. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Thank you. It's kind of hard to remember. If, I, if I'd have known what he was going to ask, I could have. I, I got a bunch of dates and everything written down. All the, I, I was just telling her I was on 11 different ships. And uh, I know what date I got on, what day I got off. I got it written down. He said he, he thought he was on more ships than some of the Navy people were. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> what kind of food do you have in those ships? Well, some of them is all right, but, but who was on that, on that ship going from uh, from uh, Schofield down to Guadalcanal? They had so many troops on board ship that you only got two meals a day, and when you when you get out of one line, I mean, after you eat, you get back in line again to get your next meal. You stand in line all the time. <laughs> That's about all we did on that ship, stand in line. He no. has a book he ordered uh, called The Iron Bottom Bay that's about Water Canal. It tells all about that, uh, about the big battles uh, on the Solomon Islands. You know. Yeah, we've well, interviewed some of the Marines that went in. Yeah. They were up. Oh, yeah, they really got thrown up. In fact, just interviewed a man in Woodward who was in the first wave at Omaha Beach D-Day. Mm -hmm. And that got rough too. Oh yeah. yeah. I never get I never got in on the initial line in any place. Mm -hmm. and I, I was I was very fortunate to, to be assigned to the headquarters, you know, most of the time. My first time. That was during was World War II. Was on here with Jima when Iwo Jima is where that's Mount Sarabachi, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Sure. If it does you some good, uh, I'll do it. I'll be it. How about the air cover quality now? Was it Our air cover? Yeah. Well, first of all, it wasn't very good, but uh, but after a while, uh, when we have these air raids, they got the night fighters in there, and then that that was a show every night. I mean, they knock that guy out of the air, you know. <laughs> Talking about foxholes, it made me think of that man at Worley from Norman down there that was our president of the organization last year. He said when he and his wife got married, they spent the first night at Biltmore Hotel. When they heard the uh, uh, police siren or ambulance, he'd jump out of bed looking for a foxhole. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, one, one, one battle there, uh, about 130 planes come over. Japanese? Yeah, Japanese planes, and that was just about the end of them. They, I mean, they just about wiped them out then. But, uh, but they hit, I don't know, three ships, I think, that was in, that, was in that bay there. The kamikazes? Yeah. But, uh, Where are the airplanes coming from, the Japanese planes? They came, they came from New Georgia, I think, or, or one of those islands you know, that, that was close by. And uh, they weren't quite ready for them, I don't think, but, but but after they got going, they really tore them up. I mean, uh, those planes coming down all over the place. <laughs> that was the last big, yeah. big air battle that I ever saw. You know, get 130 of them, and, uh, and probably about 50 of ours, I guess. And we got most of them. Yeah. 
Any reason why the Japanese didn't invade at Hawaii? I don't think they. I don't think they. They. Uh, they thought that job was going to be as easy as it was. I, I think they thought they were going to have a lot harder time, and they just weren't ready to go in there. But they didn't bring along an invasion force, you know. Could they have taken Hawaii if they had that invasion force? If it was big enough, yeah. If they had a big enough invasion force, yeah. I don't see why not. We sure weren't ready for them. Yeah. I knew I wasn't.